Welcome back to Sailing Sersha. This week we are putting our teak floors in and of course it's not easy. Um, anyone that has done a bit of a boat refit should know that nothing ever goes to plan. It's getting a bit much, it really is. Um, it's not <laughs> as easy as we all thought it would be. It's not just a physical struggle, it's a big mental struggle. <laughs> we all are a little drained. <laughs> um, <sighs> but we will power through. <laughs> We are getting our teak floors in this week with our fiberglass floors. It is obviously been exposed to the elements and a building environment for the last seven years, so it's not looking pretty. <laughs> um, it's covered in Sika and all sorts of stuff. So with us getting, even I'm covered in Sika, as you can see. Um, so with getting the flooring in, we feel like it'll just mentally give us a bit of a break. Um, it'll make a big difference in our day-to-day -day living. As anyone knows, teak is hard to live with. So we will be fitting the floors and then covering them with cardboard and towels until we can safely live on them without power tools, normal tools, all of us walking in and out, dropping things. This place has us going crazy. <laughs> but I think it will definitely make a big difference in everybody's moods, at least for the first week, and then we'll be moving on to our next projects. So the floors didn't end up being <laughs> as easy as we thought they would be. We thought it would be lick stick and put them down. <laughs> Um, we couldn't find any of the materials in Lungabon as usual so we had to source them from Cape Town, drive two hours into Cape Town, collect and drive two hours back. Never mind the cost of the stuff. Everybody told us going into this that if you're doing a boat refit and they're telling you it's going to cost so much, probably double or triple what they tell you it's going to cost. And in our case, quadruple. So it's a tough one. It's just another mountain to climb, but we're climbing. Um, so yeah, we went into Cape Town, we got Seeker, we've been preparing the floors, acetone washing, sanding, the marine ply that goes under the floors. So yeah, there's a whole lot to floors that I had no clue about. I didn't realize that there was so many stages you had to go through. You really don't look at a yacht and think this much work goes into it. You really don't. So it will give us a different level of appreciation when we are finally done. redo the ceiling of the floorboards because we seal them with polyester resin and I didn't put the MEKP activator in it so it hadn't set so I had to clean it all off and we've now redone it and it's nice and dry and set and ready for oh, fitting clean it off by melting it down with acetone again and just scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing to to get back to as close to bare wood as we could then gave it a sand and redid the resin seal. See now it's all nice and sealed. We washed the saloon floors down with acetone just to make sure there was no leftover residue and it was spotlessly clean. We applied the primer and then the seeker activator 205.
We applied the seeker with a 6mm trowel and then had to lay the marine ply down on top of it and weight it down with buckets of water. to make sure that the weight was distributed evenly over the board so that the entire board was weighted down and not just the board under the weights. But finally, after many attempts, it fit down perfectly. There was a bit of difference in color of the boards, um, but apparently that evens out with sun exposure. covered the floors in towels and cardboard just to protect the teak while we were still working inside there.
tables were fitted, my mom started varnishing the teak. And obviously now we living on the yacht, so varnishing the floors was a bit tricky. My mom did it at about eight o'clock at night and then again at about 11 and another coat at about, I think, three. After a few coats of varnish, we started filling the joints between the different teak boards with teak dust and wood glue. in Belito last uh, I'd say Mayish. then we stopped running because we got too cold in the mornings and then we just got lazy <laughs> did you get lazy no, I just got tired of waking up so early in the morning so we've decided to start running and stop sleeping until 7 so we got up at 6 this morning and we ran to our little lookout picnic spot which is just around the corner from the marina and you've got to admit it's damn beautiful I'm a morning person not so morning person <laughs> makes this whole scenario a little tough, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> episode we speak about and take you through our cursed Bimini. It has not been an easy one nor a cheap one like usual. Um, we've had a lot of issues. Stay tuned for next week's episode to find out what went wrong.